So the next topic which we are studying is heat of reaction <coughs> or you can also call it as uh, enthalpy of reaction. Okay ma? So it means that heat and enthalpy we are using as uh, synonymous terms no ma? Rendu vake terms ka vaadta unna. And that is possible in which condition? Heat and enthalpy they are equal when pressure is a constant. This point you should always remember. Are you able to understand ma? See ma, in any chemical reaction, pressure always remains constant, you know? In most of the conditions, pressure remains constant. When reaction is happening, pressure remains constant. Are you able to understand? So, when pressure is a constant, the heat supplied to the system or removed from the system, which is called as heat exchanged. It is equal to the total change in enthalpy of the system. So, heat and enthalpy and same out. A condition low. A condition low, pressure constant is no. So, bara, cut. Are able to understand, ma? So, when pressure is a constant, heat exchange and the change in enthalpy both are equal. That is the reason why I can write, either I can write heat of reaction, the heat exchanged in a reaction, or just you can write the enthalpy of reaction also. Enthalpy and endo padam anu kone confuse hai paakand. Heat anna enthalpy anna rendu okat. A condition low when pressure is a constant and in almost every chemical reaction pressure will be constant understood no and what is meant by enthalpy already we studied many many times now again we are discussing here so enthalpy is equals to so the total internal energy of the system plus the product of pressure into one u means what here u means internal energy and internal energy depends what on what ma uh, internal energy depends on temperature if temperature increases internal energy also yes. increases clear no so if i want to change in enthalpy change in enthalpy ka valante so change in internal energy plus change in work done that is the total amount of work done so work done can be written as p into delta v are able to understand ma and according to ideal gas equation we know pv is equal to nrt no uh, according to ideal gas equation pv is equal to nrt so therefore, instead of P delta V, I can write a delta Ng RT also. Okay? And what is meant by delta Ng? This is the fourth time we are discussing. Uh, what is meant by delta Ng? In a chemical reaction, so the number of gaseous moles, take only gaseous moles only. That means moles of only gaseous atoms only we have to take. Number of gaseous moles of products minus number of gaseous moles of reactants that will give delta ng value in entropy we studied no? if delta ng is positive entropy is also positive if delta ng is negative entropy is also negative are you able to understand that's it so this is about the heat uh, exchanged in the case of a reaction are you able to understand so heat of reaction again is of three types now. clear so right now so heat of reaction or you can call it as so heat of reaction is of three types ma. are able to understand what is meant by heat of reaction we have understood now so heat exchanged in a reaction is called as heat of reaction that's it clear no ma? so definition i did not write no ma? so here i will write down heat exchanged in a reaction is called what this is called as heat of reaction or you can call it as enthalpy of reaction. Are you able to understand? So reactions can be basically of three types. Ma. Reactions any rakal untai, mood rakal untai. Ewe vavi, clear ma? So, one is formation. Second one is neutralization. Okay ma? And the third one is conversion. Okay, and some other processes also may be present. So heat of reaction basically I can divide into three types. Clear number? Reaction sivegada manakunde. So neutralization can happen in a chemical reaction. If you combine acids and base, they will neutralize with each other. No? That is a type of reaction. Okay. That is type of conversion. Are you able to understand more? And when some new elements or new compounds are forming, then that is called as reaction in the case of uh, formation. Are you able to understand? Ma? So reactions there are of three types and some more reactions also may be possible. So 
remember up to here ma then we will continue in the next class hmm? neutralization now beautiful writing you are studying is heat of formation so what is meant by heat of formation the amount of heat energy exchanged exchanged means either released or either absorbed in which condition when one mole of substance is created by their constituent elements in their natural form in their standard form are able to understand ma now let us already we have studied what is meant by standard form no ma for example hydrogen exists in gaseous form that is its natural form hydrogen does this exist in liquid form no in its natural form so that is not the standard state similarly if you take uh, bromine bromine is a liquid at room temperature naturally it is a liquid at room temperature so that is its uh, natural form but it's a uh, solid form or gaseous form it is not its standard form. are able to understand ma so see ma here whatever definition we will write these definitions are very 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 important if you don't remember the definitions you cannot do the problem solves everything is the game of definitions here in this topic are able to understand so therefore the amount of how much amount of substance formed one mole of substance formed are able to understand ma by which type of atoms or which type of molecules the atoms or molecules which are present in their natural state only such type of molecules if they react and then the amount of energy exchanged either energy may be released or either energy may be absorbed also so that amount of energy we can call it as heat of formation or enthalpy of formation because already we have studied when process is constant pressure process then heat and enthalpy both are same clear no ma okay now see for example if i take an example of uh, clear ma so h plus plus oh minus it give rise to h2o no ma are able to understand so here the amount of energy either released or absorbed can i call it a can i call it as a heat of formation huh? so hydrogen ion plus oh ion they are reacting to form water so here some amount of energy may be released or some amount of energy may be absorbed so that amount of energy can i call it as heat of formation or not huh? <laughs> h plus is it in is it in its natural form hydrogen ilage h plus laga untundi ekkada chusina gallo meeku untadu kada so this is not correct because here uh, hydrogen even oh minus they are not present in their natural form are you able to understand ma then how water can be formed so h2 plus o2 they give rise to form h2 this is the natural form are able to understand ma so how many hydrogen are there only one hydrogen so half mole of hydrogen one mole of uh, hydrogen reacts with half mole of oxygen to form h2 so here the amount of energy either released or absorbed that is called as heat of formation and elements should be present only in their natural form are you able to understand ma similarly how can i write uh, the heat of formation in the case of a chemical reaction ma okay so not point in the case of a chemical reaction okay in the case of a chemical reaction delta h of the heat of formation of chemical reaction can you say how can i calculate how can i calculate so it is the heat of formation of products minus heat of formation in the case of reactants so while describing heat of reaction also same equation we have written no so here also i can apply the same relation are able to understand ma so the total heat of formation of reaction how can i calculate the heat of formation in the case of products minus heat of formation in the case of reactants this is how i can calculate are you able to understand ma so many times questions were asked on this particular equation so you should remember this one okay so next one which we study is standard standard enthalpy of formation okay ma standard enthalpy of formation so it is uh, written somewhat like this hf there is one symbol here degree symbol this is called as standard enthalpy of formation okay now can you say what is meant by standard enthalpy of formation in the last class we discussed no 
standard enthalpy of formation means what? Social state. Hmm? It's social state. No. Standard enthalpy of formation means the enthalpy of formation at a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius and one atmospheric pressure that is called a standard standard gibbs free energy we have studied now what is standard gibbs free energy gibbs energy at a temperature of 25 degrees celsius and one atmospheric pressure same concept here also are you able to understand more so therefore what i can write so enthalpy of formation enthalpy of formation at 25 degrees Celsius or you can call it as uh, 298 Kelvin and 1 atmospheric pressure. Okay, ma? So, this amount of heat energy exchanged in the system at what temperature? At a temperature 25 degrees and 1 atmospheric pressure. That amount of heat energy in a reaction is called as standard heat of formation. Are you able to understand ma? That is it. Okay. Now here standard heat of formation is taken zero for elements in their natural form. So that I will write here. Clear ma? So not point. Notice the not point. Clear ma? Not point is that standard enthalpy. Standard enthalpy of formation you can call it as delta hf star is taken zero for elements molecules in which form in their natural form are you able to understand and what is meant by natural form yesterday we have made a simple list you know in the last class okay same list you can apply here also so what was the list we have studied for example if you take hydrogen if it is in gas form clear number then delta h of star value will be how much it will be zero clear for example if you take oxygen in gaseous form then it is zero if you take oxygen in uh, liquid form then it is not zero for example if you take h2o liquid is it zero or not zero it is not zero because hydrogen natural form is hydrogen gas only. Clear number? Similarly, oxygen natural form is O2 gas only. But this is not a natural form. This is definitely a compound. Naturally, it exists in universe. But it doesn't mean this uh, hydrogen and oxygen they are present in the natural form. No. Okay, ma? Here molecules means what? This is also a molecule. But I am discussing about which molecules? The molecules which are made up of same atoms. Understood, number? O2 molecule no? made up of what? Same atoms. It's okay. So that type of molecules I am discussing. This is also a molecule, but it is not made up of same atoms. It is made up of different atoms. Are you able to understand more? That's it. So like this you can, uh, same list we have studied in the last class, no? same list you can write here also. Bromine always exists in liquid form. So only standard uh, heat of formation for bromine in liquid form only it is zero. So like that you can write sulfur. For only rhombic sulfur it is zero. Okay, ma? For monoclinic sulfur, it is not zero. For uh, triclinic sulfur, it is not zero. Phosphorus, only for white phosphorus, it is zero. Remaining all forms of phosphorus, it is not zero. So, only for elements in the standard form only, it is zero. Otherwise, it is not zero. Clear? That's it. Okay. So, this is about heat of formation. Ma? Okay. And again, I am writing the most important note point, ma, which you should always remember. All calculations should be done. All calculations should be done only for only for only for one mole itself. Okay, ma. So every calculation we do for what? Every calculation we do for only one mole of chemical substance which is formed. Now see. So therefore, this is the chemical reaction which is given now. So we are supposed to find out the standard enthalpy of formation in this particular chemical reaction. Clear number? Zinc, natural state is solid form. Oxygen, natural state is gaseous form. And they are reacting to form uh, ZN, zinc oxide. Clear number? <coughs> then, the heat of the standard enthalpy of formation 
for the case of zinc is minus 210 kilojoules per mole okay so here we assume that one mole of zinc is reacting with half mole of oxygen and one mole of zno is formed are you able to understand now yes. so therefore standard heat of formation in the case of a chemical reaction how can i write ma standard heat of formation in the case of products minus standard heat of formation in the case of reactants are able to understand so what is the product which is formed a product is uh, zinc oxide this is the uh, what you call product which is formed okay now the question is this product which is formed is it present in its natural state or not zinc natural state is zn1 na kada kada zinc natural state is solid solid form just to zn that's it. clear no so therefore its standard heat of uh, formation or standard enthalpy of formation is it zero is it zero or not no it is not zero why it is not zero because only if elements or atoms or molecules if they are present in natural form then only standard heat of formation is zero it is not present in a standard uh, form now so therefore it is not zero and the data is already given okay ma what is the data minus 2 minus of now coming to reactants in reactants what we have we have zinc which is present in its natural form we have oxygen also which is present in natural form so 0 plus 0 clear no so therefore answer is minus 210 kJ per mole okay that's all this is about the heat of formation in the case of zinc understood now heat of reaction first one we have studied now heat of formation we have studied second one is heat of uh, neutralization so what is meant by heat of neutralization now first of all i have written this is an exothermic process exothermic process means here always energy will be released okay ma when an acid and when a base when they react together and salts are formed when they neutralize energy is always released are able to understand so this is an exothermic process so what is the definition of heat of neutralization ma so go through the definition very very carefully so see what he has written amount of heat energy released when when one mole of h plus ions react with one mole of oh minus ions to form one mole of water are able to understand so in this condition the amount of energy released that is called as the heat of neutralization this is a neutralization reaction only no ma acids and bases they are reacting to form a neutral salt so that is why it is called as heat of neutralization okay for example if i take uh, this reaction if i take hcl clear no ma plus uh, naoh clear so this is a strong acid no sca means what strong acid this is a strong base clear no ma so when one strong acid when one strong base reacts then what is the product you will get you will get uh, nacl plus h2 this is what you will get no you will get nacl sodium chloride plus water is released this is the reaction which happens clear no ma so when you mix both of them immediately then immediately what happens is ionization will happen or you can call it as dissociation will happen what is meant by ionization ionization ante so hcl first of all it should split into h plus and cl minus no ma are able to understand hcl is a molecule but if you if you want to react with the case of a base first of all it should split into its respective ions that is what uh, first of all should happen no so hcl first of all it splits into h plus and cl minus similarly naoh it also dissociates into na plus and oh minus so here the h plus uh, cl minus and na plus which are uh, dissociated they react together to form the salt and remaining h plus and oh minus they react to form water 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 will be created are able to understand so therefore in this one which is the required dissociation for me here the required dissociation which i require to calculate the heat of neutralization is h plus that is what i require now because here what is the definition i have written one mole of h plus ions so in nacl i require only h plus are able to understand ma and it reacts with naoh and in naoh what i require oh minus clear no ma and both of them react to form water okay 
So, here the amount of heat energy released is you can call it as uh, minus 13.7 kilo calories of heat energy. What is meant by minus symbol? Ma? Minus symbol indicates what? Energy is released. Already we discussed in the last class, Rama. If energy is positive, it means that you are giving energy to the system. Positive energy into meaning me, energy means negative energy means energy is released out of the system. Okay, ma? So the final temperature of the reactants which is released, its temperature rises. Final temperature perutunda tagutunda. Final temperature perutunda energy release in the gata. And energy will be released in the form of heat energy. Okay, ma? Reaction Jaruta and Arskunta sound energy lo convert over the other day. Energy must be converted into heat energy. And our heat energy occurred both in the products lo kept both. Are you able to understand ma? So finally, the temperature of NaCl and H2O will be greater. It increases. Are you able to understand ma? So this is the amount of energy released. In which condition? When one a strong acid, one a strong base, when they react together. This is the amount of energy which is released. Okay, ma? Sometimes question may be given in uh, kilojoules also. Okay, we know that uh, one calorie is equals to 4.2 or exactly 4.12 joules, no ma? One calorie approximately 4.2 joules. Exact ka gaolante 4.18 joules. So multiply with this one. So 13.7 multiplied by 4.18. Just open answer. I think approximately 57.3 kilo joules. I think I approximately we will get uh, this much answer. I don't know exactly. Approximately you will get this answer. Are you able to understand? Ma? So question can be asked in the case of kilo calories also. Question can be asked in the case of kilo joules also. So both you should be careful. Are you able to understand? So therefore, uh, one more example if you want to write, uh, you can write. HNO3 plus KOH, they react to form what ma? KNO3 plus H2O. Okay ma? So, this is another uh, neutralization reaction. So, very strong acid. Okay ma? And this is a strong base. And this is the salt which is created. And this is the water. And how much amount of energy will be released ma? minus 13.7 uh, kilo calories of energy will be released. <coughs> Are you able to understand? So, make a note of this point. What is the note point we have to write? If a strong acid and a strong base okay, ma? when they react when they react then for every one mole of water, one mole of water formed, how much energy will be released? Ma, thirteen point seven kilo calories, or you can call it as fifty three, fifty seven point three kilo joules of energy is released. Are you able to understand? And these are the values only for strong acid and uh, strong base only. Clear? And what is the specialty of uh, strong acid and a strong base? Ma? Strong acids and strong base, they dissociate very easily. They ionize very easily. Are you able to understand? But uh, if you take a weak acid or a weak base, then their dissociation uh, is quite tough when compared to strong acid and uh, strong base. So therefore, in such conditions, this much amount of energy cannot be released. Are you able to understand? No? For example, if you take a weak acid, strong base. Strong acid, weak base. Weak acid, weak base. One of them is weaker. No? Then in that condition, this much amount of energy cannot be released. So that energy will be always less than 13.7. Are you able to understand? So, let us make a note of that point also. Is it clear ma, what is happening here? So, therefore, uh, okay. When any one product, when any one reactant is weaker, 
okay ma then energy released energy released is less than <coughs> energy released is less than 13.7 kilo calories are you able to understand ma is it clear okay reason what can be the reason for this one ma reason also if you remember then immediately when you see the reaction you can understand what is happening reason is what reason is sum of the energy sum of the energy released clear mama is utilized utilized for dissociation or ionization of weak acid or weak base clear no so are able to understand what is happening now why the energy released is less than 13.7 ma enduku energy takku avutundi cheppandi energy released in the process is 13.7 only but final energy will not be 13.7 what is the reason because the sum of the energy which is released that will be useful for dissociating the weaker acid or weaker base because weaker acid and weaker base it is not easy to dissociate them adi dissociate h plus ga no oh minus ga no dissociate avvali ante daniki extra heat energy meeru supply cheyali artham avutundi kada and from where the reaction will get that uh, extra heat energy so, so from the energy released by itself okay but it is releasing 13.7 for every 1 mole of water formed no same energy will be taken by either weak acid or weak base or both and some of the energy is used for dissociation that is splitting of h plus or oh minus are able to understand let us write one example so symbolically we will write strong acid plus weak base okay ma next weak acid plus strong base weak acid plus weak base okay so in these three conditions so the heat of neutralization is less than 13.7 kilo calories symbolically if you write i hope you can understand now so in these conditions the heat of neutralization it is not 13.7 it is less than 13.7 okay let us write one example clear now so very well known example which you have been studying from your school days onwards okay so ch3 coo na plus naoh it reacts to form ch3 coo h coo na plus h2 so this reaction we know no ma are able to understand ch3 coh what is the name of this acid hmm acetic acid strong acid or weak acid weak acid, weak acid. clear no ma in name of strong base or weak base strong, strong base clear no so therefore weak acid plus strong base they react together to form those products are able to understand and here the amount of energy released is minus 11.7 kilo calories okay ma amount of energy is how much released now only 11.7 kilo calories of energy is released but if it is a strong acid and a strong base then how much energy will be released 13.7 but here 11.7 so 13.7 minus 11.7 to 2 kilo calorie per mole what happened to that energy i energy am i put ah Ah, that energy is utilized for dissociating CH three CO H into CH three CO O minus and H plus. Ah, dissociation ki use hota. Are able to understand ma? So therefore, what is the note point here? I have to write note point is that clear ma? So thirteen point seven minus eleven point seven is equals to two kilo calorie per mole. Clear ma? Is utilized. Is utilized. for dissociating ch3 coh into h plus and 
CH3 CO minus. Are you able to understand? So this is what is happening in this particular condition. Clear now? Okay. Are you understanding that? Okay. So therefore, this same two kilocalories of energy per mole. This is called as heat of ionization also. E energy ions ni marchadan ki ions ga marchadan ki use ho tuhundi gada. This energy is useful to convert CH3 COOH which was a chargeless molecule into charged molecule. The molecule which is having charges. Are you able to understand ma? So therefore this energy itself we can call it as heat of ionization. Are you able to understand? Therefore 2 kilo calorie per mole is called what? Is called heat of ionization. Are you able to understand? Clear? When it is a strong acid and a strong base, then can you say what is the heat of ionization? Heat of ionization. Zero. There is no heat of ionization. Are you able to understand? Ma? But, uh, but if any one of them is weaker, then some of the energy is utilized for converting the weaker acid or weaker base into constituent ions. For that, some of the energy is utilized. That utilized energy itself is called as heat of formation. Are you able to understand? Ma? So therefore, what is the definition of uh, heat of formation I can write? Questions illa kuda to third Heat of neutralization needs to be done. I mean, Sankal Gudu Kunta Saripadhan Mat. Heat of ionization would need to be clear. So therefore, what is the definition of heat of ionization? Ma, ah, sum of the energy, sum of the energy utilized out of 13.7 kilocalories. Per mole for ionization of weak acid or weak base. Clear now? This is called as heat of ionization. Okay. So if I want to write this one in the form of an equation, how can I write? I can write. So heat of ionization is nothing but 13.7 minus heat of formation, heat of neutralization. Can I write like this one? So in this condition, what is the heat of neutralization? 11.7. Only uh, magnitude wise only we will write here. Okay. Without signs. Signs we told don't take here. Are you able to understand? So, heat of 13.7 uh, is the value which is released when acid is strong, base is also strong. Up to 13.7 release. Of but if any one of them is weaker or both are weaker, then the heat of, neutral, the heat of neutralization will be less than 13.7. That difference itself is called as heat of ionization. That is how we have to remember. No? So, therefore, I can write 13.7 minus. 11.7 is how much ma? 2 kilocalories per mole. Okay ma? Or I can write 2 into 4.18 kilojoules per mole. Okay. That is called as heat of ionization. Okay. So from a heat of uh, neutralization only, heat of ionization is also produced. Okay. That's it. Make a note up to here. Sima here. So, this is a given question. Ma. So, XML of strong acid HCl reacts with YML of strong base NaOH to form salt and water. And the rise in temperature for this condition is 10 degrees Celsius. Okay, ma. It means the salt and the water which are created, their temperature rises by 10 degrees Celsius when compared to the temperature of the products. Pro uh, sorry, reactants. Reactants temperature to compare says the product temperature 10 degree go down. Clear? So, when how much ml of HCl is taken? XML. But in the second case, I am taking 
10x 10 times more volume of HCl 10 times more volume of uh, NaOH and if they react then how much will be the rise in temperature huh? <laughs> 10 degrees only <laughs> same 10 degrees <laughs> so Sima if you are increasing the volume of HCl more energy will be released definitely so when one mole releases let us take uh, x to be one mole when you take one mole and if you take one mole of uh, NaOH also then 13.7 energy will be released 10 times if you are taking for example if you are taking 10 moles of HCl and 10 moles of NaOH then energy released will be definitely 10 times greater 10 into 13.7 but at the same time mass is also increasing now. <laughs> mass could have been together so if mass is also increased so mass has increased by 10 times temperature sorry heat energy also increased by 10 times then why temperature will change temperature will not change temperature same amount of rise in temperature first case 10 degrees rise second case also rise in temperature of 10 degrees so by concept of specific heat I can understand now S is equals to Q divided by M delta T okay so delta T is a change in temperature no so I can write Q by M into S I can write like this now so Q by M ratio if it is constant change in temperature also is a constant Q means heat energy M means mass heat energy released rises by 10 times mass also raised by 10 times that's a day a change in temperature does not change change in temperature will be same 10 degrees Celsius okay ma? so write down case number one case number one what you can write delta T is equals to Q by M into S specific heat concept we know no amount of heat energy required to raise the temperature of unit mass of a body by unit rise in temperature is called a specific heat clear so in uh, case number two case number two delta T is let us call it as delta T1 delta T2 so it is a 10 Q divided by 10 M into S heat energy released raised by 10 times mass also raised by 10 times 10 and 10 cancel so therefore what I write delta T1 and delta T2 both are same ok ma this question is the same thing is the same thing is the same thing the same thing is the same thing 10 times per unit 10 into 10 100 that is the same option but that is the same thing mark will drop and the mark will drop the mark Sulfuric acid is a strong acid. Okay? Strong acid is not nitric acid. Yes, sir. HNO4 is not nitric acid. Sulfuric acid. HNO3 is nitric acid. Okay? So, see ma. See here. So, what is the given question? 1 mole HCl and 1 mole H2S4. We have to neutralize these two acids. HCl is an acid. No H2S4 is also acid. So, I want to neutralize these two acids by using uh, NaOH, sodium hydroxide, which is a base. Are you able to understand? And you have lot of NaOH. But uh, HCl and H2S4, you have only one more. Are you able to understand? Ma? So, if energy released in neutralizing HCl is A kilojoules, and in neutralizing H2S4, the energy released is b kilojoules then what is the relation between a and b that is the question okay now first of all let us take a first reaction okay which is the first reaction here clear ma hcl plus naoh they should neutralize then what are the reactants which will form nacl plus h2 this is what is created are able to understand now see so each hcl molecule it will release one H plus ion. Clear number? And from each NaOH, one OH minus ion will be released. Okay? So both of them they react together to form one H2O molecule. That's it now. Or you can call one mole also. One mole HCl releases one mole H plus. One mole NaOH releases one mole OH. And one mole of water is formed. Are you able to understand? So everything is uh, in terms of one mole only. No? 
therefore how much energy will be released so delta hat of neutralization is how much ma? minus 13.7 kilo calories of energy will be released are you able to understand okay now let us go to the second reaction clear so in the case of uh, second reaction now what is happening ma? H2SO4 should react with NaOH to form uh, NaSO4 plus H2. This is the reaction which should form. Are you able to understand? Equation is it balanced? Ma? No. Equation is not balanced. Are you able to understand? So therefore, how to balance this equation? Sima here, H2 releases how many H plus ions? It will release 2 H plus ions. Are you able to understand? And 2 H plus ions requires 2 OH minus ions also. No? Waka H plus neutralizer warranty, Waka OH unta chal. 2 H plus are there. So 2 OH minus also should react. So therefore, I have to write 2 here. 2 NaOH. Are you able to understand? So therefore, this will give now 2 moles of OH minus ions. So 2 moles of H plus, 2 moles of OH will give how much water? 2 moles of water. Are able to understand them? So therefore, they will give rise to 2 moles of water. Okay. So here A value is how much? Minus 13.7. But here uh, B value is how much? It is 2 into minus 13.7 kilocalories of energy. Why I am writing 2 into minus 13.7? Ma? Because here only 1 mole water is formed. But here 2 moles of water is formed. So definitely energy released will be double. Okay. So now, now check the options. So answer is actually B is equal to 2A. Options long by the layer. So this is not correct. A is not greater than B. A is not equal to B. A is less than B. This is my option. That's it. Understood now? So the point is that you have to concentrate on definitions. Definitions are very important in chemistry. Definition perfect ka mind law artham in calculations you can do very easily. Understood? Waka mole H plus su, waka mole OH to react hai, waka mole water hai form of one. Then the amount of energy released is minus 13.7. Understood, no? That's it. Well, I would do. So, see. So, heat of combustion or you can call it as enthalpy of combustion. What is meant by combusting? Combusting means what? Ma? Burning anything, oxidizing anything. Okay, ma? or electrical arcing also you can call it. So therefore, what is meant by heat of combustion? See, ma, if you burn anything, energy will be released. No, so this is also an endothermic, sorry, exothermic reaction. Are you able to understand? So the amount of energy released when how much compound is burnt, ma? One mole of compound is completely burnt, or if it is oxidized, or it is electrically arced. This is called as the heat of combustion. Are you able to understand? For example, if I take uh, CH4, are you able to understand? Ma? CH4, when it reacts with oxygen, then it forms what? Then it forms uh, CO2 plus H2. This is what is formed. And in addition to that, how much amount of energy will be released? So, minus uh, 212 kilo calories of energy per mole. This much amount of energy will be released. CH4 means a methane number. So, if you burn one mole of methane, in oxygen then this much amount of energy will be released okay and if you want to convert this one in terms of uh, kilojoules one calorie is equals to 4.18 joules number so approximately you will get uh, 890 kilojoules per mole are you able to understand so this amount of energy released we can call it as heat of combustion okay so how much amount of uh, fuel or how much amount of compound we are burning ma? one mole of compound we have to burn then the energy released is called as enthalpy of combustion or heat of combustion are you able to understand and see ma, whenever in the reaction you see c always it forms a co2 if you have carbon in that compound compound low carbon unte. and when you oxidize that particular compound what is the final reaction final product which will form co2 always co2 will be formed okay we are saying this because the combustion reactions mirror oils on the final combustion reactions what I mean what? Here and do react at the combustion reaction where ask when calculate change and turn 
So whenever carbon is present in the compound, it finally uh, converts into CO2. Clear, no? Similarly, whenever hydrogen is present, water will be formed. Whenever sulfur is present, SO2 will be formed. Whenever nitrogen reacts, uh, NO2 may be formed or uh, NO also may be formed. But this is the general molecule. Which one? NO2 is the general molecule. Are you able to understand? Ma? So this minimum you have to remember. Whenever you see carbon, CO2 will be formed. Hydrogen, H2O will be formed. Are you able to understand? Ma? And when sulfur is present, sulfur dioxide, SO2 will be formed in the case of combustion reaction. Clear? So, make a note of this point. So, what is the note point you have to write? Ma? We have to write, we have to write combustion reactions. Okay? If they are not given, if they are not given, if combustion reactions are not given, then we have to write the combustion reactions and minimum these values you have to remember. Clear no? So then I will write the heat of reaction or enthalpy of reaction in terms of heat of combustion. Are you able to understand? No? So that is heat of combustion I am trying to write in the case of a chemical reaction. Okay. So therefore in a chemical reaction how can I write in a chemical reaction? Okay ma? So delta H of chemical reaction is equals to so delta H of reactants minus delta H of products. And this is a very 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 important relation. Are you able to understand? It was uh, because previously in all the enthalpies what we were writing, ma? previously what we were writing, we were writing that heat of reaction is equals to delta H of uh, products minus delta H of reactants. But here in the first time what we are writing, delta H of reaction is equals to delta H of reactants minus delta H of products. Are you able to understand? So this point you should not forget. Are you able to understand? Ma? So, the heat of combustion in the case of reactants minus heat of combustion in the case of products. Is it clear? That is it. Okay. So, after this, we study another parameter which is called as calorific value. <coughs> okay, ma? So, calorific value. So, what is meant by calorific value? The amount of energy released, amount of energy released, clear? When 1 gram of fuel, 1 gram of fuel is burnt. This is called as calorific value. <coughs> Are you able to understand, ma? So, what is the difference between heat of combustion and calorific value, ma? Heat of combustion means what? There we are burning one mole of any compound or one, mo one mole of uh, fuel. But here calorific value means what we are burning only one gram of a fuel. Then what is the amount of energy released that is called as calorific value. Are you able to understand? What does calorific value indicate? If calorific value is greater, clear, then the class of a fuel, the class of a fuel is higher. Okay, ma? If calorific value is greater, it means that that fuel is belonging to higher class. For example, we have kerosene, we have petrol, we have petrol used for uh, uh, aircrafts. Everything is it same? Hmm? Petrol bicycle is not a in the pagosta. Calorific value will be lesser. Calorific value of petrol is greater. Calorific value of the fuel used in aeroplanes, it is much better. Are able to understand? It means for every 1 gram of fuel you are burning, if it is releasing more amount of energy, it means that its calorific value is greater. Same is the concept with the case of uh, heat of combustion also. Are able to tell you? See my here. So, CH4 plus oxygen, when they are reacting with each other, then the amount of energy released is 120 kilojoules per mole. Okay? 
and when C2 hits 6 and oxygen when they are uh, reacting with each other then the amount of energy released is 420 kilojoules per mole. It means one mole of CH4 is reacting, one mole of C2H6 is also reacting and this is the respective energies which are released. Now the question is which is a better fuel? So better fuel is indicated by what? Better fuel and Ella chapter. If its calorific value is greater, then you can say it is a better fuel. That's all, Rama. So, therefore, we are supposed to find out the calorific value. Okay. And calorific value always we calculate for 1 gram only, Rama. Calorific value we calculate for 1 gram. Okay. Now, you take uh, first reaction. Okay. In the first reaction, which is the compound we are burning, CH4. Are you able to understand? So, what is its uh, molar mass? Ma? Molecular weight or molar mass both are same. Molecular mass is how much? So, carbon is 12, no? Hydrogen H4 is uh, 4. So, total how much? 16 grams. Now, what is the meaning of 16 grams? 16 grams and molecular weight and molar weight and Are you able to understand? No? So, molar weight is 16 grams means what? What do you understand? 16 amu ki 16 grams ki onna difference hai mei. What is meant by 16 amu and what is meant by 16 grams? Ippat ke padnaar saal jepna ni ippat ke na. Shaat term nunche jepta ne onna. Sarpan. Difference between 16 a sima same I can write it as 16 amu also. So the atomic mass of uh, carbon is 12. Atomic mass of hydrogen is 1. But 4 atoms are there no? So 4. So 12 plus 4, I can write 16 amu also, atomic mass units or unified mass or I can write 16 grams also. So what is the difference between 16 amu if I write, that is the mass of single molecule of CH4. Vakka molecule this kuna If I take only one molecule of CH4 and molecular masses they are measured in amus if I take single molecule, atomic mass units. Okay ma? But the same value, if I write it as 16 grams, then what is the meaning of this one? This is the mass of 1 mole of CH4 molecules. Grams lo raste dan artha me It means we are taking the mass of 6.023 into 10 power 23 molecules. The mass of those many molecules is how much? 16 grams. Adi artha Are you able to understand ma? If you are writing molecular mass in AMU, then that is the mass of only one molecule, one molecule, one molecule of CH4. But if you take one mole of molecules, mole means what? 6.023 into 10 power, 23 molecules, kalipi mass this kunte, adi dent loss tundi, adi grams loss AMU is a very small quantity, no? Grams is a very big quantity. AMU means single molecule, grams means for one mole of molecule. Are you able to understand, ma? So therefore, one mole of CH4 if I burn, then how much energy is released? Then 120 kilojoules of energy is released. Are you able to understand? Therefore, for one gram of CH4, how much energy is released? 16 grams of CH4 if I burn, then I am getting this much energy. 120 kilojoules of energy I am getting for one mole of CH4 molecules if I burn them completely. Okay. But if I want to burn only 1 gram of CH4, then how much energy will be released? How, how I have to calculate? 120 divided by 16, that's all, no? 16 grams ki the energy release hai te, Oka gram ki 16 to divide jaya alaga the energy release hai Okay? And this is its calorific value. So this is the calorific value of methane. Because calorific value is measured from 1 gram only, no? I have taken 1 gram. Are you able to understand, ma? Similarly, one, uh, what is the molecular mass of uh, C2H6? Ma? See here, I am writing second reaction. So in the second reaction, which is the molecule which I am taking C2H6? So C2 means carbon, carbon 12, 24. 24 plus 2 is how much? Ma? 26 gram. Huh? Ah. H2? Ah, sorry, H6, no? H6. H6 means 24 plus 6 is how much? Ma? 30 grams. Are you able to understand? It means one mole of C2H6 if I take. How many molecules? Ma? One mole of C2H6 molecules if I take. 
then what will be their combined mass 30 grams are able to understand it means 30 grams of c2h6 if i react if i burn them in oxygen then how much energy is released one 420 kilojoules of energy is released for burning one gram of c2h6 uh, so one gram of c2h6 if i burn then the amount of energy released is 420 divided by 30 for 30 grams this much energy for one gram you have to divide by 30 that's all no? so find out which value is greater c2h6 is greater Oh. Ah, yes. this is a bigger value are you able to understand no? so definitely c2h6 is a better fuel are you able to understand calculate change calculate to see which one is the bigger value this much is how much you will get ma? Huh? 7.5 something this minus one 14. minus we will leave what is the value 14, 14. Ah, definitely this is a bigger fuel its calorific value is greater no so c2h6 is a better fuel when compared to ch4 that's it. understood no? negative means what is meant by negative negative indicates that energy is released that's all negative indicates that energy is released that's it plus indicates that you have to supply energy mandutandante artham em energy release avutundane kada artham mari edi baaga mandindante then energy okay ma so see what is the definition we have written ma so the amount of heat energy which is utilized or absorbed to form what to form one mole of gaseous atoms how many atoms should be formed one mole gaseous liquid form or solid form gaseous atoms should be formed okay from where from their constituent elements or uh, molecules in their standard form are able to understand ma? so elements or molecules they should be present in their standard form what is meant by standard form already we have studied no? oxygen is present in gaseous form in standard state bromine it is present in the form of liquid in standard state are able to understand sodium it is present in solid form in uh, solid state that is in a standard state are able to understand ma? so these atoms or molecules if i want to convert into gaseous molecules and how many molecules one mole of molecules and what is the raw material the atoms or molecules which are present in their standard state then the amount of energy which you have to supply that is called as heat of atomization are you able to understand ma? so is it an endothermic reaction or exothermic reaction hmm? endothermic reaction because it absorbs heat energy you have to supply heat energy no otherwise the molecules which are present in either gaseous form or uh, what you call uh, liquid form or solid form they cannot be converted into gaseous form you have to supply energy in this condition are you able to understand no? so therefore what is the meaning of this let us see so oxygen gaseous form this is in its natural state no? oxygen O2 when it is present in gaseous form this is the natural state or not either the natural state clear no? so this one you have to convert into um, this is atom or a molecule this is a molecule molecule you have to convert into two oxygen atoms in which form in gaseous form then the amount of energy which is absorbed that is called as delta he are you able to understand clear number similarly if i take one more example bromine bromine naturally it is present in liquid form br2 br2 molecule okay so therefore this i have to convert into two bromines are you able to understand ma? and they have to be converted in which form gaseous form then the amount of heat energy which is absorbed that is called as heat of atomization are you able to understand ah. now see here how many moles of oxygen is reacting ma? one mole but how many is it 20 gather you is it two zero is it? <laughs> two o is this two times uh, the oxygen are you able to understand two o means what here two moles of oxygen is formed not one mole of oxygen is formed but what is heat of atomization to form one mole of gaseous atom so here the amount of energy released will be two times the heat of atomization because two moles of oxygen is formed no? to form one mole of gaseous oxygen but here how many moles are formed two moles of gaseous oxygen is formed 
So therefore, here the amount of energy absorbed is how much? Two times the heat of atomization. Are you able to understand? Here also same concept. One mole of bromine, one molecule, it is getting separated into two atoms. <coughs> That's what is happening, no? Bromine lo any atoms untai? Red. Rendu separate separate kavili potagada. When it converts into gas form, one atom will be travelling in this direction, one atom will be travelling in this direction. So one molecule of bromine, it will give two atoms of bromine. So how many moles of bromine is formed? Two moles of bromine is formed. So here also the heat of atomization will be how much? Two times the heat of atomization in the case of bromine because two moles are formed. Arthotonai definition, so that's it. Are able to understand ma? So here we have to make some uh, note points. Note points are that in the case of metals, okay ma? In the case of metals, so heat of atomization is equals to heat of sublimation. So these two will be equal in which condition ma? In the case of metals. What is meant by sublimation? Sublimation and ah, solid form directly converting into gaseous form. So there the amount of energy which is utilized that is exactly equal to heat of atomization in which case? In the case of metals. Sodium metal ni this kunna mo. Are able to understand mo? Sodium metal ni baga heat chesta ke the direct gas ga maari poindana ko. Then the amount of energy supplied is nothing but heat of sublimation. No? So that heat of sublimation and the heat of atomization in the case of same sodium, they are equal. Because sodium is a metal, metal. In the case of metal, this is always satisfied. Are able to understand what? <coughs> HOEM means what? Heat of atomization. Okay. Heat of S means what? Heat of sublimation. Sublimation means directly solid converting into gaseous form. That is called as heat of sublimation. Are you able to understand ma? That's it. This is uh, one not point. Clear? One more not point is that in the case of in the case of single bond molecules okay ma? Heat of atomization is equals to half of uh, bond enthalpy okay or you can call it as enthalpy of bond dissociation energy bond dissociation energy or also you can call it as heat of bond dissociation Are you able to understand? Ma? So this is another point uh, which you should remember. Okay. In the case of single bond molecules, what is meant by single bond molecules? Okay, ma. H2 gas converts into 2H gas. So this is a single bond molecule only. No. Between hydrogen, how many bonds are present? Between between two atoms of hydrogen, how many bonds are there? Only one bond is there. So when one bond is present. Then the heat of atomization is how much? It is half of the bond enthalpy. What is meant by bond enthalpy? We will study. Bond enthalpy is also called as enthalpy of bond dissociation energy. Clear number? Enthalpy of bond dissociation energy is also called as heat of bond dissociation or heat of bond dissociation energy. Okay, ma? So these are the two uh, note points you should remember. In the case of metals, heat of atomization and heat of sublimation. Both are same. In the case of single band molecules, so heat of atomization is only half of uh, heat of bond enthalpy. Are you able to understand ma? That's it. Okay. So now we will try to define what is meant by bond enthalpy or heat of bond dissociation energy. Make it up. So in the following reactions, iodine is converting into iodine in gaseous form. Ma? Clear? Similarly, Zinc is also converting into zinc atoms into gaseous form. Okay. So out of these chemical reactions, in which reaction HOA means what? Heat of atomization. Heat of atomization is equals to heat of sublimation. So yesterday only we have discussed this one under some note points. Note points ah, in the case of metals, 
జ్వేరియా చెప్పింది ఏం చేస్తున్నారా మీరు అంతా ఓకే మా సిమా వీ డిస్కస్ట్ నో ఇన్ ద కేస్ ఆఫ్ మెటల్స్ హీట్ ఆఫ్ ఆటోమైజేషన్ అండ్ హీట్ ఆఫ్ సబ్లిమేషన్ దే ఆర్ ఈక్వల్ సో అవుట్ ఆఫ్ అయోడిన్ అండ్ జింక్ విచ్ వన్ ఈస్ అ మెటల్ జింక్ ఈస్ అ మెటల్ సో డెఫినెట్లీ దిస్ ఈస్ మై రియాక్షన్ సో దేర్ ఫోర్ ఇన్ ద కేస్ ఆఫ్ మెటల్స్ క్లియర్ వాట్ కెన్ ఐ రైట్ హీట్ ఆఫ్ ఆటోమైజేషన్ ఈజ్ ఈక్వల్ టు హీట్ ఆఫ్ సబ్లిమేషన్ ఓకే సో బేస్డ్ ఆన్ దట్ ఆల్సో క్వశ్చన్స్ కెన్ బీ ఆస్క్ బట్ సెట్ మేక్ నోట్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ వన్ ఓకే మా so next we study about the next enthalpy which is called as bond enthalpy okay ma or you can call it as bond dissociation energy okay ma or you can call it as enthalpy of enthalpy of bond dissociation okay so in questions it can be asked on these are different names ma it can be called as a bond enthalpy also bond dissociation energy also or enthalpy of bond dissociation also okay so by looking at the def what you call this heading only you can say nama what is the meaning of this heat energy which you supply can you say anybody ah uh, bond breaking very good energy required for bond break clear how many bonds we have to break ha huh? already i said you that in this total chemistry always we study quantity in terms of one mole only okay ma so the amount of energy required to break one mole of covalent bonds into gaseous atoms is called as bond dissociation energy or enthalpy of bond dissociation okay so write down the definition so the amount of heat energy required okay ma to convert to convert one mole of or uh, to break that is better to break one mole of covalent bonds okay ma into gaseous atoms and atoms also should be in which form they should be in gaseous form we are not discussing in liquid form we are not discussing in solid form are able to understand no we have to break the bonds and we have to convert those atoms into gaseous form then that amount of energy required is called as bond enthalpy or bond dissociation energy are able to understand for example between hydrogen and hydrogen what kind of bond is present <laughs> covalent bond is present no are able to understand no so this converts into 2h again which is present in are able to understand ma ah ra ra clear gaseous form so here the amount of energy required is called as delta hb the amount of energy required for breaking one mole of covalent bonds are able to understand similarly i can write a chlorine in gaseous form if i want to convert into 2cl clear ma again in gaseous form then the amount of energy required is called as bond enthalpy clear similarly bromine which is in liquid form naturally it should be converted into 2br again in gaseous form then the amount of energy again required is called as bond enthalpy are you able to understand ma so this is the definition of bond enthalpy now see see ma here how many moles of uh, oxygen we are uh, converting ma we are breaking how many moles of hydrogen we are breaking one mole. one mole of hydrogen we are break clear no but how many moles of gaseous hydrogen is formed two moles of gaseous hydrogen is formed for example 10 molecules of hydrogen if i break they convert into 20 atoms of hydrogen that's all oka molecule or two hydrogens untai if i break one molecule two atoms will be created similarly if i break one mole of hydrogen two moles of hydrogen gaseous atoms will be and yesterday we studied heat of atomization no what is heat of atomization what is meant by heat of atomization ma huh? amount of energy required to form one mole. one mole of gaseous atoms but here how many moles are formed two, two moles are formed so therefore what will be the total energy so two times of heat of atomization that's all no? because two moles of hydrogen in two. gaseous form is formed a form lo undali final ga 
finally it should be present in gaseous form only no so two moles of gaseous hydrogen is formed so therefore the energy required for this process will be two times the heat of atomization are you able to understand ma but here how many moles of hydrogen we are breaking one, one. one mole and for breaking one mole of covalent bond what is the energy required bond enthalpy or you can call it as bond dissociation energy okay ma so in this condition the amount of energy required is delta hb bond dissociation energy okay in this condition the amount of energy required is are able to understand how much it is it is a two times of heat of atomization are able to understand what is happening is it clear ma so for breaking this one bond enthalpy but forming two moles of uh, gaseous atoms two times of heat of atomization so therefore this energy and this energy is exactly same no are able to understand yesterday also we had a small discussion on this one so therefore what i can write therefore i can write so bond enthalpy is exactly equal to two times of enthalpy of atomization or you can call it as heat of atomization so this is an important point are able to understand no? similarly write one uh, note point okay so if more than one bond is broken one more than one bond is broken from same molecule from same molecule then at each breaking at each breaking different energy different energy is required okay ma so we take the average of we take the average of all energies and that energy is considered that energy is considered what bond enthalpy are you able to understand ma clear for example if i have a molecule and many bonds are present many covalent bonds are present are you able to understand so first of all i am breaking one bond then i require some energy so if i want to break a second bond also i require more energy or less energy more energy, huh? more energy. why because already one bond is broken no ma so it has gained some charge you now so to break another bond i require more energy when compared to the first energy are you able to understand similarly if i want to break one more bond then again different energy is required are you able to understand ma then uh, which energy i have to consider to be the bond enthalpy mood bonds break jesam okay molecule first the this one second the third the ye the this one just you take the average of all the bond enthalpies that will be the bond enthalpy of that particular molecule are you able to understand let us write one example ma okay for example if i take uh, methane ch4 if i take clear then ch4 how i can write it can be split into ch3 plus h clear na ma so here some amount of energy will be released no let it be delta hb1 clear then from ch3 again i will form ch2 plus h clear na ma and here the amount of heat energy required is delta hb2 ch2 is converted into ch and h and here the amount of heat required is delta hb3 so ch is finally converted into c plus h then the amount of heat energy required is delta hb3 are you able to understand ma all of them they are covalent bonds only so in each breaking i require different amounts of energy then which is the bond enthalpy in this condition then the bond enthalpy in this condition is delta hb1 plus delta hb2 plus delta hb3 plus delta hb4 divided by 4 because we are taking the average of all the bond enthalpies are able to understand ma so this is one not point which you should remember in this condition okay write uh, another small data ma write down so heat of reaction heat of reaction in terms of 
bond enthalpy heat of reaction in terms of bond enthalpy so heat of reaction can be written as bond enthalpy in the case of reactants minus bond enthalpy in the case of products okay and this is a very very important equation <coughs> are you able to understand ma see ma here also we have written in opposite form do you remember clear no ma so in heat of combustion also we have written heat of combustion of reactants minus heat of combustion in the case of products so in bond enthalpy also we are writing the same thing are you able to understand ma so heat of reactants minus heat of bond enthalpy in the case of products and all the previous conditions what we have written heat of reaction is equals to heat of products minus heat of reactant thus in these two conditions now uh, you have to write reactants minus products understood no okay see this question so bond enthalpy is of hydrogen oxygen and oh r 105 120 and 220 kilo calories per mole respectively are you able to understand ma then what is the heat of reaction and this is the reaction which is given and which heat energy he is asking us to find out bond enthalpy heat of formation he is not asking heat of neutralization he is not asking he is asking bond enthalpy that is the amount of energy required to break these bonds are you able to understand and in the case of breaking which is the equation ma heat of reaction is equals to so bond enthalpy of reactants minus bond enthalpy of products are you able to understand so what are the reactants here hydrogen and oxygen they are the reactants okay how many moles of hydrogen is reacting ma two moles of hydrogen is reacting are you able to understand so therefore we write two times of and what is the bond enthalpy of hydrogen ma 105 clear plus next how many moles of oxygen is reacting one mole of oxygen is reacting and for oxygen what is the value 120 minus of the bond enthalpy in the case of products and which is the product which is created here hydrogen now sorry water okay ma and in water what kind of uh, covalent bonds are present oh bonds are present in water oh bonds are present no so therefore minus of how many moles of water is formed two moles of water and for each mole of water what is the amount of energy required 220 clear no ma so therefore now do the calculation 105 into 2 is how much ma 210 plus 120 minus how much huh which one into 2 ma ah yes four bonds are present now here oh bonds how many oh bonds are there two oh bonds are there so totally how much ma so 4 into 220 88 clear so therefore minus 88 plus 330 so how much ma so minus 550 kilo calories that is the amount of energy required are you able to understand so this is the point which we forgot ma in hydrogen how many oh bonds we have two oh bonds are present are you able to understand so therefore two times the energy is required and one more to why we are writing here one more to we are writing because two moles of water is created no that's all that is how we do the calculation are able to understand that's it okay now see so next we are studying about heat of fusion heat of vaporization and heat of sublimation all of them they are uh, related to changing of states only no solid state converted into gaseous state ga sorry liquid state liquid state converting into gaseous state so all of them they are related to each other so we are writing under the same heading so therefore what can be heat of fusion heat of fusion means melting process no or uh, solidifying process anything you can say clear so what is happening in this condition ma solid it should convert into liquid okay or a liquid can also be converted into solid and this process either from solid to liquid or liquid to solid it occurs at same temperature temperature does not change are you able to understand ma so i can write uh, change in temperature is how much zero but there will be some particular temperature and what is that temperature called as that temperature is called as melting point or you can call it as freezing point also both are same melting point in the sense solid is converting into liquid, liquid. when liquid converts into solid it is called as freezing point melting point of water zero freezing point of water zero zero both are same no are able to understand ma 
melting point and both freezing point both are same they occur at the same temperature so therefore how much amount of solid should be converted into liquid mass? again one mole because we do every calculation for one mole so one mole of solid if it should be converted into liquid at which uh, temperature at a melting point then the amount of energy released or amount of energy absorbed that is called as heat of fusion are you able to understand and that is re represented by delta hf fusion okay now similarly can you write the same type of equations for uh, vaporization also okay come on write down so heat of vaporization how can you write same type of equation heat of i will do one thing i am a very intelligent person i will change here only completed my this one so heat of vaporization okay so the amount of energy required or released to convert one mole of liquid into gas or steam at boiling point instead of melting point i have to write boiling point then it is called as what it is called as heat of vaporization so here liquid is converted into gaseous form or you can call it as steam or steam can be condensed into liquid also are you able to understand ma for example if you take water water you can convert into steam at what temperature at a temperature of 100 degrees celsius at the same 100 degrees celsius steam can be condensed into water also okay and this temperature we can call it as boiling point and the here the amount of energy either utilized or released that is called as delta h vaporization okay ma so delta h vapor are you able to understand okay similarly what is meant by heat of sublimation ma ah, ah, to convert ah, into gas directly so if solid directly converts into gas bypassing the liquid form then that type of energy required is called as sublimation that process is also called sublimation are you able to understand ma so write the third definition so therefore heat of sublimation okay so the amount of energy required to convert one mole of a solid into gas, uh, into gas at at a particular temperature at a particular temperature that is called as heat of sublimation okay ma? so here a solid should be converted into gaseous form okay then this amount of enthalpy we can call it as delta h sublimation and the beautiful point is that delta h of sublimation is equals to delta h of fusion plus delta h of vaporization okay are you able to understand ma so heat of sublimation will be equal to what heat of fusion as well as heat of vaporization because here solid is converting into liquid form here liquid is converting into vapor form here directly that is happening no so definitely if you add this energy and this energy then only you will get this total energy are you able to understand ma that's it so that is about heat of fusion vaporization and uh, sublimation so next we study about heat of hydration or you can call it as crystallization also crystallization okay ma dilution and solution okay so heat of hydration heat of dilution and heat of solution are you able to understand ma so first of all we will write what is the definitions of hydration dilution and solution ma clear so what is meant by hydration or crystallization are you able to understand see ma if you take any powder form of any chemical substance and if you add a required amount of water it converts into solid form we should have observed this one no? so mana vadda samagri lo kuda podiga unna dentlo water esnaru ankonde adi crystal ga maarthundi 
are able to understand ma so that amount of water required to convert any substance into or uh, any substance into crystal form that is called as heat of crystallization are able to understand ma so what is meant by crystallization exact amount of water required or you can say water molecules required clear ma to convert into convert into crystal form is called what is called as heat of hydration sorry the process of hydration are able to understand ma then what is meant by dilution okay ma if water molecules are if water molecules are more than more than required amount more than required amount for crystallization or hydration then it is called dilution are able to understand ma so required amount of water molecules if they are more than required for crystallization for example if i require five water molecules for crystallization are able to understand ma but i am adding 50 water molecules so there is extra water molecules no ma then that process is called as a dilution are able to understand then the third process is called as solution so what is meant by solution solution means clear if infinite water molecules are added if infinite water molecules are added then it is called then it is called what one then it is called solution are able to understand okay so that is the difference between hydration or you can call it as crystallization and uh, dilution and uh, solution just you are adding a required amount of water molecules it is called crystallization or hydration more than that you are adding that is dilution so are you are adding a very huge number of water molecules then it is called as solution that is the difference understood no? let us take an example of this one so that we can understand what is happening in this condition so see now so for example cus4 it requires only five water molecules then it will form cus4 5 h2o and crystal will be formed cus4 copper sulfate crystal will be formed okay ma so each molecule of cus4 requires how many water molecules five water molecules then the crystal of cus4 will be formed then what is this process called e process name antamo this process is called crystallization okay ma or you can call it as hydration and the here the energy released is called as heat of crystallization or heat of hydration if you water water molecule some energy may be released you no know? that amount of energy released what we call it as it is called as heat of hydration are you able to understand ma so energy released energy released in above process is called what is called heat of hydration are you able to understand ma so just you are adding the required amount of water molecules there is no water molecule extra then the amount of heat released in this process is called as heat of crystallization or you can call it as dilution sorry uh, hydration clear in the next process what i am doing is i am taking cus4 and i am adding 50 water molecules clear now then it forms what then it forms a cus4 50 h2o or the same one i can write it as cus4 5 h2o clear now and uh, 45 h2o so i can write like this are able to understand so for each cus4 molecule actually only five molecules of water is required but how many water molecules i am adding 50 water molecules i am adding then this reaction can be written like this also no okay cus4 5 h2o is the required process for hydration but additionally how many water molecules i have 45 water molecules are present are able to do this process up to here what you call this one ma this is called as hydration clear no and this total process is called as 
dilution. Okay, understood. No? Similarly, next what I am doing is clear number. So CuSO4 plus thousand water molecules are added. Okay, then the reaction how I can write CuSO4 thousand H2. Clear. Same reaction I can write CuSO4 5 H2O and I can write uh, 45 H2O and uh, again I can write uh, so 950 no more, 950 H2O so I can write like this are you able to understand clear now what is happening so therefore CuSO4 5 H2O what is the name given hydration so from up to here it is called as hydration clear CuSO4 45 H2O it is called as dilution, dilution. CuSO4 and 1000 H2O it is called as solution, solution. okay ma? and energy released in each process that is called as heat of dilution he, sorry heat of hydration heat of dilution and heat of solution, solution. that's it are you able to understand ma? so this completes our topic which is called as thermochemistry here so tomorrow we will start the topic of what ma? solid